I think it just helped them to understand that there is a problem, you know, going mm -hmm. on. You know, we see the problems maybe around us, but we may not be aware of problems that are going on in other parts of the world, even though we're connected to that, you know, even, there, even though our demand affects the supply, you know. So um, I think it really kind of opened up their, um, their view of the world, and it helped them to see, wow, you know, there are people in other cu cultures that, you know, might be different from us, but there are things that are the same as well that we use and we do that are the same. And then they were also able to see that, you know, there is a problem on, you know, this side of the world that affects me, and there's a way that I can impact it and I can help it. I can either create, you know, add to that problem, or I can help find a solution to that problem. So mm -hmm. sometimes the things that we need affect people who don't even live near us. So we're all kind of connected in that way. We need things from this rainforest far away. So if we need lots of stuff, what happens to the trees? They die. They die. Lots of trees are cut down. Yeah, and we won't need and, and we don't we're not gonna, gonna have food food. like paper or if too many trees are cut down then we might not have yeah, maybe enough paper or things like that. Now <laughs> The world's rainforests cover a huge area. Where did we see that yesterday? We looked on the on the map and we talked about where the tropical rainforests are. But did you know that trees are not just being cut? Large parts of the rainforest are being bulldozed. They're being knocked down. Okay? They're being cleared. They're also being burned. Because people need that open space for farmland. People need that open space to make roads or to make homes, or to even build cities. Or they can make, like, the farmhouses. Or to build farmhouses. But mm -hmm. what happens to the rainforest when they do this? It goes away. It goes away. It vanishes, doesn't it? It disappears. Talking about just all the different groups, um, you know, we talked about the Tachi people and how you know they they do help us kind of get our they get the natural resources to help us get our goods, and then we talked about just different tribes that live in rainforests in in Brazil and in West Africa, uh, the Kayapo tribe and. Um, a couple of other, the Baca Pygmies of um, Africa, and it was just neat to see. I gave my students time at the beginning of other lessons to just look at books about the rainforests, and they were actually able to just identify, you know, this little boy looks like he might be from the Kayapo tribe. They made book-to-book -book connections because the face paintings were similar, or the haircut was similar, or um, the decorations might have been similar, the clothing, you know, and so they went from saying, oh, that looks, that looks weird, you know, and they actually said that to, oh, that's different, and oh, and this guy looks like this guy, and, and now we kind of know, we know why they might dress this way, and we know, we have a better idea of why they might paint their faces, or why their haircuts are different than ours, so, um, you know, it kind of just bridged that gap from it being weird to that's just different, and, you know, you know, I decorate myself in a way that's different from them, and that's okay. You know, we have our own culture, and we have our own um, customs and our own traditions, and they were able to see that, and then identify their own. It's hard for us sometimes, I think, to identify our own customs and our own culture and our own traditions, so mm -hmm. um, it helped to bring that focus back. Mm -hmm. So we, we, they asked, you know, a couple of times, you know, why do, they, why do they have that paint on their faces, or why is this head painted this way? And, you know, I talked about a lot of times people might do that for decorations or for different reasons, maybe for a cultural event or a special day or things like that. And I said, you know, we have special days here where we might paint our faces. You know, on Halloween, sometimes paint their, people paint their faces a different color, and that's to celebrate a special day, you know. Um, so that kind of made it real for them. They said, oh, you know, I get that. Or, you know, Miss Money wears earrings. You know, I have a hole in my ear. That's one way I decorate myself. You know, that's kind of similar to, you know, these different groups and how they decorate themselves. So. When we were reading about the people, we talked about different groups that live in different places in the rainforest, right? Okay? So, those groups are called, there's a word for those groups. Do you remember the word? No. Hmm, I see that bold word right here in my book. This word is tribes. tribes. Can you say that for me? Tribes. tribes. And remember, each tribe, each group has their own culture. They speak their own way. They dress their own way. They have their own culture and customs. They what? They paint too. Yeah, they, paint, they even paint their faces in different ways. You're exactly right. Okay, so we talked about these Baca pygmies that live in the rainforest of Africa. And we talked about where that was yesterday on our map. And we used this globe, didn't we? Okay, we said they live right here in West Africa. That's where our pygmies live, okay? And then we talked about the Kayapo people. They hunt and they grow their crops in the rainforest of Brazil. Right.
here in South America. Okay? And then we talked about the next group who also paints their faces, just like the Kayapo do, but they paint their faces in a different, different way for different reasons. Okay.